so this morning, um, I want to share something that God has been staring in my heart for a few days. Interestingly, I didn't even know I was going to preach this morning. It was just yesterday I realized it. Um, but this is something that God has been, you know, staring up in my heart. And I, I really think that it's, it's something that we need to um, be more vocal about in the body. I think that motherhood is becoming extinct. Now, I'm not just talking about having babies. I'm talking about actually the art of nurturing. Actually nurturing a child, nurturing a legacy, nurturing something and someone. Sometimes not even someone that you birthed from your womb. Because sometimes children are not, I always say children are not formed in the womb, they're formed in the heart. Which is why I'm such a big proponent of adoption. You can adopt a child and love the child the same way. But I think that it is now becoming something that is lost. Yesterday, I was in the car. We, we had a meeting yesterday with our pastors. And as when the car, I think Pastor K was listening to, uh, um, he was just scrolling on Instagram. And so he stumbled on something. <laughs> and it was some, of the, some ladies on a podcast. Listen, there are two things I think they should ban in Nigeria. Podcast and Buchi Mix. Blender <laughs> and podcast. Those two things are causing problems in Nigeria. So on this podcast, these two ladies were talking. And they were talking about the fact that one of them said, Oh, I lost my virginity too late. So the other one asked her, When did you lose your virginity? She said 24. No, I have a problem that we're even having this conversation on podcast. And I said, asking myself, where is her mother? Because even at almost 50, I'm still afraid that there are things I will say that my mother will hear where she is. And she will send me slap from there. You know that, you know that slap that you feel it in your spirit, man? Because you have experienced the natural one so many times. And I thought to myself, what is going on? That we have a generation that we're not nurtured enough to know that there are some things you don't say. Even if you think it, you shouldn't come out of your mouth. When I was growing up, there are things I would say. My mother would ask you, did your tummy just make noise or you said that thing? There are some things that you don't say. They had this full conversation. On social, on social media that does not forget. Internet that does not forget. That means that that girl will be a great grandmother one day and her grandchildren will bring it out. Because mothers are becoming extinct. Now I'm hearing people say, oh, I don't want to have children because I don't want to lose my figure. What's that? What's figure? What, what exactly is that? Figure that if you eat Eba every day, you will still lose. And there's no gain to that. And you know, it's scary for me because the real commandment God gave us was to be fruitful and to multiply. And it is the Christians, in quotes, that are saying these things because the unbelievers are marrying four to five wives and they are procreating and they are spreading their seed. But God wants godly seed. And the people who can give godly seed are not godly and they are not having seed. So even though I didn't come here to fight this morning... But I really think it's something we need to pay attention to. Which is one of the reasons why I wrote Nurturing here. I, you see, I've looked in the Bible and I've seen mothers of the Bible. And I think that there's a, there's a gap that we need to bridge. And I'm praying that this morning, after this morning sermon, that we will be able to bridge that gap in the name of Jesus. So let's start with Proverbs 31 verse 28. It says, Her children rise up and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praises her. Many women have done excellently, but you surpass them all. This scripture says that her children, so it tells me that it's speaking of a mother, that her children rise up to call her blessed. Every time I see something in the Bible, it tells me that there's a, there's a flip side to it. So that means that there are some mothers who their children will curse. So there are mothers who children will bless, but there are mothers who children will curse. 
And the only reason why these children are blessing their mother, look at it, said they rise up. I believe that if your children rise up, if they excel in life, they will have no choice but to bless you, especially if you were part of their journey. So this morning, I want to talk to you about mothers and mothers. Somebody say mothers and mothers. So my question this morning, even though I'm going to be speaking mainly to the women, men, I believe there's a word in here for you as well. My question for you this morning is, are you a mother or are you a murderer? Ask a woman beside you, are you a mother or are you a murderer? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you some women in the Bible who were mothers and some who were murderers. So I'm going to start with two women that I, I mean, I have... By the nurturing book, you see them. I have a lot of mothers. I'm so fascinated. Maybe because it took me a while to get on that journey of being a mother. So I've studied mothers in the Bible. I'm so fascinated by them. I'm so, I mean, I see how God works with them, especially women who are submitted to him. Because God is really after a godly seed. And the, the decision of having godly seed, whether you like it or not, largely rests on the woman. Any man can propose to you, but you are the one who looks at the man and decides, can I produce after this kind? Then you join yourself with him. It's very rare to see anybody marrying at gunpoint, if you see anybody at all. Most women, it is the decision. Oh, I love him. But most times, we're not thinking, is this man the kind of man that can be a father to my children? So the decision still largely rests with you. So I'm going to give you I have a lot of mothers, but I'm going to give you two mothers and two murderers, depending on how pe time permits me. So I want to start, of course, with the most... I mean, how do you start talking about mothers and not talk about the one that God himself chose to murder him when he was coming as a man? So let's start with Mary, the mother of Jesus. Let me look chapter 1. I mean, you know the story, so I'm not really even going to read it too much. How even as a teenage girl... An angel of the Lord appeared to her and said, you are blessed and highly favored. And said to her that you are going to have a son and you will call him Jesus. And she said, how can these things be? And God explained to her how the Holy Spirit will overshadow her and you know the power of the Most High will come upon her and that she will have a holy son and the son will be known as the child of the Most High. And she said this thing. She said, how shall these things be? For I don't know a man. They explained all that to her and they told her that with God, nothing shall be impossible. And he said something else. He said, your cousin, Elizabeth, who everyone thought was barren and is now old, is now six months pregnant. And Elizabeth said something. Give me verse 38. Then Mary said, behold, the ma I don't want this version. I want the one that says, I am the handmaiden of the Lord. But this one says, Behold, the maid servant of the Lord, be it unto me according to your word. And the Bible says after that, that the angel departed from her. So Mary understood from the beginning when God was giving her this assignment, that she was just simply God's nanny. And I think that that is where all of us must begin as mothers. Yes, God gives you the privilege to carry that child for nine months, but you must never forget whose child it is. Never. And even though, like I said, I'm speaking to the mothers this morning, fathers, I need you to understand that every mother I saw in the Bible who was really a good mother had the support of her husband. So you are not exempt from parenting. If anything, God puts the responsibility and the leadership of parenting on you. He was boasting about Abraham. He said, I know Abraham. He said he will command his children in my ways. Not he will suggest to his children. So all those ones that you're doing, oh, my son doesn't want to go to church today, leave him, let him stay at home. It's not a suggestion, sir. You are to command them. There's an age where children cannot be left on their own. And it's your responsibility as the head of the home to take that role as the spiritual priest of that home. Amen? Amen. So she said, behold, I'm the Lord's nanny. Be it unto me according to your word. And the Bible says the angel departed from her. And from that point that the angel left her, began a journey of courage. You know me, I always like to think about what happens beyond what is written. Remember that there was a law back then that if you get pregnant without being married, you'll be stoned at your father's door. So this was a young teenage girl 
that they had told that she would carry a child without being married. She was engaged. What God was asking her to do was put aside all your dreams, all your plans, all your goals for your life and carry my own. And mothers, that's what God asks you to do when he puts a child in your womb. He's saying, I know you have your plans, but allow me to interrupt your plans. Because I want you to work with me to build destiny. This woman knew that she stood the chance of losing not just the man she loved or was about to marry, but she also stood the chance of being killed. And this girl carried that kind of confidence and still went ahead. The sacrifice and the obedience is beyond me. And she knew the child was not her own because at the point of his death, Jesus told her, mother, woman, woman, he not call her mother. You see the difference? He said, woman, look at your son there. Son, look at your mother. He handed her over to someone, but she knew at that point that she had to release him. I want to ask a question, mothers. Because I know that a lot of mothers, we think that our job is to hold on to our children. They are not even your children. We must understand that and be ready to release them when the master has need of them. So all those your dreams, he must be a doctor, he must be a lawyer. The Bible says, train up a child in the way that he should go. And when he's old, he will not depart from it. Train up a child in the way he should go. Not the way you want them to go, the way he should go. Not the way you wanted to go, could not go, so you now want to go through them. <laughs> Train up a child in the way he should go. How do you know how a child should go if you are not praying? I can't even understand how somebody can say I'm a mother. Being a mother automatically means you are an intercessor. The two go hand in hand. Because you must understand what God wants to do with this child. You are just a nanny. And for those of us who live in this part of the world, we understand that. Imagine you hire a nanny. And you tell the nanny every morning, you must bathe my children, they must brush their teeth, they must dress up, they must eat, and they must go to school. And then you notice that your child faints one day. And you say, what's wrong? You've not eaten. You say, oh, I don't eat in the morning. I eat at 4 p.m. every day. Then you call your nanny. And say, why is this child? I don't understand. Why is this child? They say, Oh, you know I'm the one taking care of the child now. So I've decided that they should be eating at 4 p.m. I can't be waking up early in the morning to be cooking for them. Is that nanny still alive? <laughs> so what makes you think that you have the right to tell God what you want his child to be? Your job is to ask God, how should I train this child? That's the question you should ask. And that's one of the things I love about Samson's mother. When the angel appeared to her, she said, tell me how we must raise this child. What do we know to know about his future? How should we raise him? You must go back to asking God. That's what makes him mother. You are just a nanny. And you see, another beautiful thing about Mary was that she had a mentor. You see all this, this is how I want to, this is how I want to raise my children. This is how I, I know. I, see, listen. There are things that the mothers that have gone ahead of you know that you will never know. That's why the Bible says that let the older women teach the younger ones. The only way they can teach the younger ones is if younger ones are willing to learn. There might be things that they are doing that you should learn from them not to do. But there are also things they are doing that you should learn to do. One of the things that we had is a praying generation of mothers. My mother was always on her knees. Always. Always. And because I was a curious child growing up, one day I asked her, I must have been about eight or something, I asked her, why are you always praying? You know, that was the day I learned the concept of God as a father. My mother sat me down, got off her knees and sat beside me as an eight-year-old. If you've not, if, you see, we need to honor our parents. We are getting to that generation that cursed their mothers and fathers. That generation knew something that is missing today. My mother sat me down as an eight-year-old and told me, I lost my father as a child. God is the only father I have. Say, so the same way when you have a problem, you go to your dad. It's the same way when I have a problem, I go to the only dad that I know. What do you think that did for me as an eight-year-old? You can't convince me that God is not a father. 
You can't convince me. Because I saw her pray and I saw God answer her prayers. And we have a generation now that are not praying. How do you think you turned up like this? How do you think you have survived like this? You with your bad character. Somebody's praying. Whether you call her or not, she's praying. Whether you visit her or not, she's praying. Whether instead of sending her money, you're sending it to your girlfriend, she's praying. And now we have a generation that can't even be bothered. But Mary had a mentor. Look at her mentor, Elizabeth. She went to see Elizabeth because she was carrying something that had never been carried before. Elizabeth too was carrying something that had never been carried before. They didn't have mates. Mary was too young to be a mother. Elizabeth was too old to be a mother. So she went to find out how do you do these things. Do you know one of the things she learned from her that I hope mothers will learn today is how to be resolute when God tells you something. This woman had been waiting on God for a child for years. And the Bible says she and her husband were righteous. So it wasn't as if they sinned. And when her husband came out, he was mute. He couldn't talk. Listen, men, marry a woman that can interpret your dreams when you are too weak to speak. He didn't say a word. He came out of that place. And this woman knew, I must preserve this man's legacy. And she knew this child will not be called Zechariah. This child will be called John. On the day of naming ceremony, all the uncles and aunties and old men of the village that they were not there when the journey started, they all came out and gathered there. <coughs> this child shall be named Zechariah. How do you know, sir? And she said, no, his name will be John. At a time when women could not speak, she said, his name will be John. And they said, ah, but nobody in our family, that won't concern you, sir. Everybody in your family can be named anything, but this child, his name will be John. Do you know that Mary stood there and watched this whole thing? She picked up something from there. That even if he kills me, I will stand for what God said I should do. She stood there and watched this woman fight for her child's destiny. Don't let the world call your child what your child is not. And so this woman fought for her husband's legacy. They would have called that child something else and changed that child's destiny. That's why I am careful about what we name our children. This generation of, oh, the child's name, I don't want to call any name that will make people angry, but I don't know all these funny, funny names that are raining now. What is wrong with our traditional names? What's wrong with it? And if you must name your child something, find out the meaning. Because every morning you are calling your child darkness, you don't know. What's the meaning? You don't know. It's not that all of you are calling me Mildred. When I was growing up, Mrs. Yoma, everybody called me. And when you call me Yoma, I answer. You know what Yoma means? Good head. So when you call me Yoma, I answer you yes. Because as you are staying, I agree with you. Amen. My head is good. My head is, my head is not good. My head is good. Ah. My head is good. Very good. This is where mothers... They nurture their children. See how their children turned out. They nurture their children. The children lived and did what God said they should do. Imagine, you know, sometimes mothers, I need to beg you, let's not love our children out of their destiny. Imagine Mary had loved Jesus so much and be crying, you cannot die. How can you die? How can you die? Are you not the first? Look at your brothers. Are you not? Your father is... She said, do you know that nonsense? Jesus, who man no get time? When she started that one, she said, see, woman, don't... He was to say... The way we used to answer sometimes, I said, yeah, Jesus, you should say, get respect. But then I remember he's a creator. <laughs> Those were mothers. Let me show you two mothers in the Bible. Maybe you may recognize yourself. Maybe you may recognize somebody you know. But if the, if the shoe fits. Matthew 14. I read from verse 6 to 11. I'm reading, yes, International Children's Bible. It says, on Herod's birthday, the daughter of Herodias danced for Herod and his guest. And Herod was very pleased with her. So he promised he would give her anything she wanted. Promised her what? Anything. Are you angry? Promised her what? Anything she wanted. Anything she wanted. Are you that? The king promised her anything. Look at what happened. 
Herodias told her daughter what to ask for. So she said to Herod, give me the head of John the Baptist here on a platter. Next verse. King Herod was very sad, but he had promised to give her anything she wanted. And the people eating with him had heard his promise. So Herod ordered that what she asked for should be done. They offered your child a blank check. And mommy, ma, what you told your child to ask for was um, John the Baptist's head on a platter. John the Baptist's head that after one week is smelling and is rotting. That's what you asked for. This child's destiny could have been great. But her mother killed it because of her unforgiveness, her anger, and her bitterness. How many mothers are dragging their children into battles they know nothing about? You are killing your children's future and their destiny. This girl had a chance to get anything. And her mother said, ask for something that will not be of any value to you. Just because it will satisfy my pain. How many of us are using our children? You know all those things you got in our children and say, you see, men cannot be trusted. John the Baptist said, your daughter has brought somebody who loves her. And because they maltreated you in your husband's house, you are not giving her information that would destroy her. John the Baptist said, this girl had a chance at life. John the Baptist said was what her mother or father. So how many of us are in pain, unforgiveness, bitterness, and we're dragging our children into it. You know, we don't talk to people in that family. You know, we don't. John the Baptist head. Because who knows whether it is someone that from that family that is, that is tied to their destiny that can move them forward. But John the Baptist head. And the king had no choice because he had made a promise. Anything you want. Anything I read this in my head used to scatter. Anything you want. Okay. Let's even assume you want to be unfortunate. You want to ask for John the Baptist's head. Could you not ask for John the Baptist's head and? But you see, evil will always blind your eye. When you are a wicked person, your mind is twisted. You can never see the will of God. Never. She said, go and ask for John the Baptist's head. That will not use for anything. The girl collected it and gave it to her mother. Destroy this girl's opportunity. Once in a lifetime opportunity. Let me show you another mudra or mudras. First King chapter 3. I'll end with this. First Kings chapter 3 verse 16 to 18. One day, I'm reading the CV version. One day, two women came to King Solomon. And one of them said, Your Majesty, this woman and I live in the same house. Not long ago, my baby was born at home. And three days later, her baby was born. Nobody else was there with us. One night, while we were all asleep, she rolled over on her baby and he died. Then while I was still asleep, she got up and took my son out of my bed and she put him in her bed. Then she put her dead baby next to me. In the morning, when I got up to feed my son, I saw that he was dead. But when I looked at him in the light, I knew he was not my son. These two women... I, if I have the power, I will shoot film on them because they are, they are cinema, the two of them. How can a mother sleep so much that you will roll on your child and kill your child? Then the second one, how can you sleep so much that they will change your baby and it is in the morning? Yes, so we are all talking about it now. But half of us in this room are asleep. Half of us are asleep. The world is changing your baby. You are sleeping. Bible says while men slept, the enemy sowed seed. Let me tell you something. What you don't know is that when you read things in the Bible, it looks like story. It is a prediction of what is happening now. Look everywhere. The things that were abnormal before have become normal because we are sleeping. I was watching cartoon, cartoon, cartoon. Do you know cartoon? Cartoon. Is it not what children should be watching and you will just go away? You should not be worried because what can they possibly do? A mop was in love with a dog. Then a brush was not trying to scatter their love. 
At the end of the day, the mop and the, the dog now won. They were now kissing. How did it happen? We were sleeping. That's what happened. We were sleeping. Children have already become addicts on social media. How did it happen? We were sleeping. Some of us even handed them the tab. We rolled on our baby and killed them. So my question this morning, are you a mother or are you a murderer? You are there laughing at this scripture. Your children are friends with people that you should not even allow near anywhere near your children. They are just still with Satan. Satan is asking them, did God really say, and you are a permissive mother? Anything they bring, he says, it's okay. It's not every time they beat a child. It's not every time they shout at a child. Please leave my children. I know I'm training my children. The, the, you know, I, I read a lot of psychological books. They say we should not beat children. The Bible says foolishness abounds in the heart of a child. And it is the rod of correction that drives it far from them. Be sleeping. Be sleeping. The person you are playing with is not playing with you. Satan is after your children. And you are sleeping. Wake up at 4 a.m. to pray. Yeah, I'm tired. Wake up at 5 a.m. to pray. Holy Spirit, one more hour of sleep. Wake up at 6 a.m. Hey, hey, I'm late for work. You are not too tired to go to work. But you are too tired to be a mother to your children. Listen, destiny will judge you. I said destiny will judge you. These two women were asleep. That one slept on her baby. Let me tell you what saved the other woman. The Bible said when she got up in the morning, she took her child to the light. You better take your children to the light of the word. She took her child to the light. And she said, this is not my child. Some of you need to stand up and say, this is not my child. He may be smoking and drinking, but this is not my child. He may be womanizing, but this is not my child. He may not know anything in school, but this is not my child. You need to stand up and be resolute that his name is John. We can't be playing. We're asleep in this generation. Rolling over our babies. Allowing people to change our babies. Children don't know whether they're boys or girls anymore. They don't even know anything anymore. And we're all there walking about with makeup on our faces. Maybe our mothers did not make up as well as we did. But we turned out okay because they prayed. Maybe we need to get rid of all this makeup and this wig. I want to get on our knees and the tears are coming. The kata is coming, but you are saying this child is John. This child is John. This child is John. I don't care what the world is calling your child. You need to get up. We've slept enough. Mothers, what did I say? We've slept enough. It is enough. And anything Satan has done, we must get up today and say, thus far and no more. How many mothers are with me this morning? I said, how many mothers are with me this morning? If you are with me, I thought you'd be on your feet this morning. How many are with me this morning? Fathers, can I ask you to join us this morning? We must get our children back. We will say no more. Thus far, no more. I've heard all of the stories and I don't care. This child is John. This is not what God told me about my child. When you were carrying that baby, what did God tell you? If you didn't ask God, it's not too late. Start speaking over your children now. I don't care what the world is labeling them. I will not accept it. My child is John. I say my child is John. I will not accept it. Oh, my I will not sleep anymore. They cannot change my children. No. They are for signs and wonders. My children will be taught of the Lord. Great will be their peace. Oh, my Libra. They spirit will be tender towards the things of God. They will serve the Lord. They will seek the Lord. They will love the Lord. Satan, you cannot touch these ones. Satan, you cannot confuse these ones. I declare they are godly seed. I declare they will serve the Lord. I will not bury my children. I speak life. I speak life. I speak peace. Every spirit that is not of God. I command you 
to get out. I reject the spirit of fear. I reject the spirit of fear. I reject the spirit of suicide. I reject the spirit of depression. Every vile spirit. I reject you in the name of Jesus. I recognize that I'm the handmaid of the Lord. My children will not depart. They will not depart. They will not depart. I'm a kusotelia nekelegedede. I'm a haribosha. Eh, saya lekida no bosha taya legede. Eh, brata kato de 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 de. Aye balaka tano kusa dalia bahande gele. Rata kala de bosha. Hatasa you have for signs and wonders. David, you have for signs and wonders. You are taught of the Lord. Great is your peace. Eh, manodi shakada yele de de. Oh, David, you are a man after God's heart. You will serve the Lord. Eh, kadibra hande gede shata. You are born to win. Eh, di katoz and elegedisha. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Listen. I'm going to end with this. One of the things that God, in 2020, I believe, one day I was praying. I think I was praying on Instagram when the thing hits me. That my children are born to offering to the Lord. Because Satan can bring fear. Would they serve God? Would they not serve God? You know some pastor children go with what? You know some minister children? Eh? I say, Satan, who are you talking to? No, 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 no. These ones, they are burnt off in. Let me tell you what burnt off in there. You can't even pack the ashes. Because if it's still a living, it can resurrect and walk away. You see my children? They are bu- burnt off in. One day I'm going to church. And then my son asked me, where are you going to? I said, we're going to church. He said again. I said, eh? I said, no, 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 no. You are not among people that say again, no. That's who you are. We are church. We don't go. We are church. You are burnt. That's, they can't pack you. You are burnt offering to the Lord. Listen. You must sacrifice your children to Jesus. Just release them. And that means those of you that use your ch- church to punish your children. Especially those parents of David's army. I've heard, you, I've heard your matter. Your children say, you won't, go to ch- you won't go to David's army today. You are being rude. Are you kidding me? Isn't that where you should push them to? So you're going to declare, from today, my children are burnt offering to you, O oh God. Let your voice be louder than your neighbor's voice. You need to be serious about this. You are burnt offering. My children are sacrificed to you. Do with them as you please. Hey, Calibraham de Kede Shata. Lebra Daka do Satalia Mambra Halegede. Hey, by you the Ladi Hadakadia Mambra Halegede. Rata Brakalu Shata. Ye Calibraham de Gelegedesa. Burnt offering. Lord, do with them as you will. Do with them as you please. Hey, Sabraka Ludo Shata. Hey, they don't belong to me, oh God. Nekaya le mosa brada kali shaba. Hey, dayama leke de de de. Ripa kali. Rika badu sekele baba. Rika baya baba. They are born to 